back to the channel, everybody. This morning I wanted to do a quick update on how much timing is too much timing, why some strategies do include a lot of timing, and if there's a way for you to tell what you want to do versus what somebody else does. So to start, we're going to talk about why lots and lots of timing. When we look at most performance cars as they are released stock, we're going to use the Evo 10 because it's an easy one to pick on. Mitsubishi strategy is that they want a lot of ignition timing out the top, fairly low boost. They spike 19 pounds. They drop to about 12. They run an extremely rich air fuel. Gasoline scale is nine and a half to one approximately. So we're talking 0.65 Lambda. Very, very rich. The reason they do this is catalytic converter protection. They have to have the ignition timing in order to make that extremely rich mix mixture start to burn, hopefully without a misfire. And for the most part, it does okay. It doesn't make much power, but it keeps the car safe. The Evo 10 has other issues that are part of why they do that, I feel. They are afraid of putting barbed fittings on things, so the fuel pressure regulator line has a tendency to blow off. Their fuel pump relay is a micro relay. It doesn't last very long. So in that particular instance, if you have both blow off, it goes from a 9.5 to 1 air fuel to mid-11s usually. I think 1140 is what I've seen. I've actually tested it just for the sake of knowing. When we tune the car, obviously we're tuning for an 1150 air fuel, maybe an 110, depending on the application. But let's look at how their timing actually ends up looking. This is a stock Evo 10 map, completely stock car. This was a 2012 MR that came in for some work. The owners wanted it tuned. So over here we see RPM. Next, barometric pressure. Obviously, we're about sea level, so that isn't any surprise. We have the boost level. At this particular point, I'm going to just look at 7,000 and above because it kind of gives you an idea of how crazy they get. That's where the car goes the richest, actually, also. 13.6 pounds, dropping to 12.75. This is idle steps, which isn't affecting us. The airflow through the MAF is the equivalent of 180 load. But look at these numbers. 23 24, 25, 24. And as we saw before, they start extremely high. If we back up to 5,600 RPM, 200 load, 19 degrees at 16.4 degrees of timing, if we look right here. So what does it end up doing? Re relatively low knock. Two counts, one count, no counts. Realistically, you can get away with that timing when the rest of the tune is, in my opinion, extremely messed up. What is interesting is I've also tested this, taken six degrees out here with absolutely no change to power. Normally, that means we're past minimum best timing for torque or MBT. Now, if we switch to the same car, a log later, we see roughly the same RPM range, roughly the same boost, I did get a little bit more boost in there, 13.9, 14.3. We are 10 degrees less timing. No knock. 11.50 air fuel. So this is great till we have one of those problems we talked about, a fuel pump relay breaking or the fuel pressure regulator line coming off. And now all of a sudden the 11.50 turns into a 13.5 air fuel in boost. We end up with a cracked piston. I would presume this knock would go crazy. I'm not brave enough to test that, so I've never done it after I tuned a car. But in talking with some customers, I do know that EGT goes from 1,610 degrees to 2,000. They replace the relay, and then all of a sudden everything's happy again. So anyway, quick update on timing, what some people might think is excessive. There's always going to be somebody that wants to run more. Anyway, hope everybody's doing well. Take care, guys.